Not again. Are you kidding me? You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, always remember this show is free and never forget how much I appreciate your support. Let's just say it. Get out of the way. Any day that ends in the letter Y, it's a good recruiting day for USC. Look, you snooze, you lose. You better wake up and smell the coffee because Lincoln Riley and the staff, they're on one of those uh, recruiting benders right now. USC got another defensive commitment. That announcement came around just before 6 a.m. local time in L.A. Tristan Castro is his name. That's your newest Trojan verbal commitment. He's a three-star cornerback uh, from Upland, California. He committed to USC on Tuesday morning this week. So depending on what, when you're watching this episode of Locked in USC, he committed via social media at, I believe his tweet came across at 5.59 a.m. West Coast time. Why? (laughs) Nobody's up yet. Well, my everydayers over there on the East Coast are, but um, whoever told him to pre-program to have this thing go off at 6 a.m., next time, let's wait a couple hours. Anyways, Castro, he chose the Trojans um, over, let's see, he had offers from Washington, Arizona, Cal, Colorado, and a, a handful of others as well. So you have Manti um, Tagoe, Tagoai on Monday. You have Castro on Tuesday. And let's just face it, it's another winning recruiting day for USC, right? Seems like they're getting one, one per day at this rate. And then there's this. I mentioned on yesterday's episode of Locked on USC, my everydayers, you know, they've got their receipts, they'll tell you. Uh, Five-star elite wide receiver, uh, Andrew Marsh. He was going to be at practice today, Tuesday. Uh, And so there I was, you know, standing outside. It's still dark. And I see Andrew Marsh being dropped off, standing on campus around 5.30-ish. He's with his mom. Annie Hansen, USC's recruiting director. Um, I'd like to refer to her as Julie from the Love Boat, if you understand. Some of you who are old enough will understand that uh, that, <laughs> that 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 distinction. Anyways, um, she was playing chaperone. She picked up Andrew and his mom from their hotel, brought him to USC's campus in time for practice. And while they're on their walk on their way up to the McKay Center, uh, Andy stopped stopped just long enough to say, "Hey, Andrew, let me introduce you to Bear Alexander." I'm going to have a little note on Bear in the next segment. Uh, with regards to the actual practice report uh, from Tuesday morning. So there I am. I see Andrew Marsh. And then I glue it. A short time later, 5.59 a.m., the bat signal, the the, uh, the victory salute is going off. Castro was committed to USC. Here's the thing. Here's what you need to know about, about Castro. Um, if you want to play cornerback at USC and you want to be a part of Danton Lynn's system, I, I think one of his prerequisites is you have to be at least six foot two. Castro meets that requirement. He checks off that box. He's six foot two, 160 pounds. Yeah. 160 pounds. Remember, he's going into his senior year of high school. By the time you see him coming out of his first, you know, his first few weeks at USC, when that happens, uh, he'll be a new man. And if you've been if you've been keeping track and watching uh, USC, they've been putting out some before and after photos of the of this year's team going into the uh, locker into the weight room and then coming out. Um, yeah, big differences. So here's why Castro picked USC. Quote: Coach Riley came a few weeks ago uh, to check in on me and assured me that the defensive team uh, staff would come by. This is what he told wersc.com back in February. 
So today, meeting with Coach Lynn, uh, he said he looks for the right defensive backs, and I'm one of them, and my tape looks solid. We were talking a little bit about the offseason preparation and talking about the upcoming track season and how track really helps at my position. We talked about the DB coach being a great fit and how um, and how he'd be getting them right. It was just the beginning of building a solid foundation between him and I. Uh, he would like to see me in the spring, and I look forward to it as well. I've talked with Coach Doug Belk, too, and I think I'll have a relationship with him uh, like I did with Coach Dante. So fast forward. Here we are, April 2nd, and now... Tristan Castro from Upland, California, becomes USC's eighth commitment in the class of 2025. Now, after that, um, everyone is trying to figure out, well, why did Annie Hansen wait till like 9 a.m. to throw up one of these? Yep. Yeah. She's usually right on top of things. For all I know, this could have had, had to do everything to do with Tristan's commitment. I'm thinking maybe not. Again, I'm just reading the tea leaves. I'm re feeling my gut. I'm thinking something else. I'm thinking, did Andrew Marsh give the silent treatment? I know that USC would love him to pull the trigger um, sooner rather than later. And he, I know he's got a couple of more trips planned. Even if he takes those trips, they don't. They wouldn't mind if he uh, decided to pull the ripcord and say, I'm a Trojan. So, uh, Andrew and his mom, they were in town for about 24 hours, roughly. I think they are in town for a little bit longer than that. Here's a couple of snippets from a premium article over on WeRSC.com. Do me a favor. When you're done making Locked on USC your first listen every day, head on over there. Go pay a dollar. Become a new subscriber. Read the rest, and then you can stick around for all the other stuff. All right. Enough of the uh, sales job. So here's uh, what Andrew told WeRSC.com. Just a couple of snippets. I definitely got to see some behind the scenes. Uh, I got to watch practice a little bit and kind of just get to see a little bit more how everything works around here. The ins and outs, really. I got to spend a lot more time with the players, see how they act, interact, and really all of that. Also, got to chop it up with, uh, with a lot of them. And then Julian Lewis was up here. So me and him got to spend a lot of time together and chop it up. And Julian was talking to me, trying to get me to commit, close quote. All right, a couple of points here. Number one, Marsh chose to visit USC at a for a 5.30 a.m. practice. He didn't have to do that. You know why he didn't have to do that? Everything that I just mentioned in that quote, he's he's been to USC already five plus times. He's seen all of that. Number two, um, in my opinion, obviously I'm saying it, but I just want to make sure I'm making this very clear. Uh, I think this visit, this particular visit, was to close the deal. Mom, I want to be here. I think you want me to be here. Let's go do this together. So I think they were kind of, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, checking out the freshman living arrangements or, you know, private living arrangements. NIL, baby. Um, the classes that he would be able to check into. I think NIL 101 introduction was uh, maybe part of the day. Again, just throwing some stuff out there. Seeing what sticks against the wall. Uh, how about point number three? This is a really big one. Juju Lewis is solid with the USC. And those are his words, by the way. Um, and they had their own private time together. Those two. So again, you can check out all that over at wrc.com. Uh, and number four, before we get out of uh, this recruiting segment, um, Lincoln Riley. Yeah, he was chatting it up, chopping it up with mom all the way to the airport. So, uh, yeah, high priority. We'll find out sooner rather than later what Marsh's intentions are. I don't think he's going to wait all the way until November uh, to make his announcement. Just saying. And I lied. There's one other recruiting note I want to get out of the way before we uh, transition to USC's spring practice number seven in the second segment. Pittsburgh, California, four-star safety. His name's Jaden Hudson. He's trimmed his list to, uh, he's gotten down to his top four. Yep. Six foot one, 180 pounds. He told 
on threes, Hayes Fawcett, who does all those cool edits, uh, that he's down to Tennessee, UCLA, USC, and Ohio State. And Hudson broke down the three schools out of the four. Tennessee, I like the way they were recruiting me. And last year, I went to the Georgia Tennessee game when they played in Georgia. This year, they played a great on they great they played great on the defensive side of the ball. As far as Ohio State, they have a great history, competing for national titles every year and playing in bowl games every year. It's a place where you can always go and compete and get the best development. And then USC. I like the environment of the school. I like Coach Lincoln Riley. He's a great coach. I like how they use Kalen Bullock. They say they uh, they say the way they use Kalen is the way they are going to use me, close quote. Now, a couple of things I want to point out about this. Uh, at one time, Jaden was considered a very heavy lean to Oregon. Now, they're not even in the top four. Just the other day, their insider says, He's going to be an Oregon Duck. Oops. Um, and the other thing you might have noticed, I said his top four, USC, Ohio State, Tennessee, UCLA. Who didn't he break down? Yep. <laughs> Jaden had nothing to say about UCLA. Giggity. <laughs> you like, uh, you like, you know what, you know who Giggity is. Anyways. So um, if I had to guess, I think he's probably an Ohio State lean at this point, but you never know. Personal brag before we uh, check out of this segment. I want to give a huge thank you to uh, all the viewers and listeners. Locked on USC was voted the podcast of the week for all of the college channels with the uh, Locked on Network. Yeah, this was the note I got. Mark Hulkin has done a really good job with the fun, cold opens that attract and keep viewers engaged. His spring camp coverage of the USC Trojans is off to a hot start. Also, the intel that he brings from a recruiting standpoint, paired with his ability to form it into a story, has created a really great listen. So, again, thank you to all of you. And if you are watching on YouTube and you haven't become a subscriber yet, and you need to be an everydayer, subscribe. Click the subscribe button. See this? Thumbs up. Smash it because you like it. And don't forget to forget to hit the bell notification button. That way, you will not miss an episode five times a week. Do you know what I like about Fire TV? You can just turn on your smart TV and it's already there. You don't have a smart TV. It's fine. Go buy a smart stick, a fire stick, excuse me. Plug it into the back of your TV and now you have a smart TV. It's that easy. And Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournaments, you're going to want to have Fire TV. And did you know that Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels that deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, and they do it all for free? And that includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and your Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should, trust me. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com forward slash locked on Fire TV. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today for a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, let's get into it. Practice number seven. Remember, there are 15 allocated spring practices. One of them is the spring huddle. So if we're on number seven, let's just call it the halfway point. We're there. Tuesdays, the last week started early. This week, it started early. Next Tuesday, it will also start early. Uh, 5.30 a.m. is a scheduled practice time on Tuesdays. Uh, I was there early, earlier than early. Um, the first person I saw it was at 4.48 a.m. Coach Josh Henson 
he had on his morning face and uh, he was walking from the parking lot into the McKay Center. The next time I saw him, I don't know, about 20 minutes later, big smile on his face. I think it's because he had a cup of coffee. I wish I had a cup of coffee at that point. It wasn't even 5.15 a.m. yet. And at that point, I had already heard two F-bombs dropped by two different people who were uh, looking forward to practice. I was using finger quotes for those of you who are listening on your favorite um, podcast platform. Now, we talk about leadership by example. Typically, the first guys out for practice are your special teams specialists, the kickers, holders, snappers. Billy Arnold was one of the first guys. So, um, yeah, that's leadership right there. He's still, remember, he's one of the transfers. So he's showing guys, hey, let's get out to practice. Let's be on time. And on time means early. Speaking of early, being on time, when Sam Green's ride dropped him off on McClintock between that separates Howard Jones Field and the McKay Center, uh, one of the uh, GA coaches, I'm not sure which one it was. I wasn't really paying attention. He said, hey, quote, Sam Green has 13 minutes to be on time. <laughs> he literally used the, like he was talking in third person. I think Sam made it with less than a minute to spare. I noticed that Lincoln Riley was walking in as Sam was coming up the ramp. So they're okay. Now, just an observation and an opinion from me. I mentioned Bear Alexander being introduced to Andrew Marsh in the first segment. As long as Bear Alexander produces on game days, I'll be perfectly fine with his Lendale White approach to practice. Lendale White wasn't known for wanting to practice every day. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, so when Bear uh, walked out of the locker room the first time, he was wearing sweatpants, cleats. I think he had a hood, you know, some sort of T-shirt hoodie. I don't know. Anyways. Um, the rest of the defense, they were wearing full pads, their white practice jersey. I noticed a few minutes later that someone had sent Bear back to the locker room for some gear. Just saying. Anyways, so what's the uh, what's your first thought if you saw Coach Nua and Coach Henderson walking together, heading to practice? Uh, well, it should be how freaking lucky is USC's defensive line room. That was the first thought that came through my head. During practice, those two were working in concert with each other. Uh, one of the um, ways that the defensive line group gets warmed up after the skipping stretch is they roll out that, uh, that tent. It's on wheels. I don't know. It's probably about three and a half feet off the ground, four feet at the most. And you got they're you know they're working on staying low off the ball when the ball snapped. So the ball snapped, they you know they explode out of their stance right into Coach Nua, who's holding a you know one of those blocking pads, and then they're either directed to the left or to the right, and then they get in line for the blocking sled drill. I was really focused on you know what while I'm talking, I apologize, folks. You know what I got something for you. Let's do that. So <laughs> hopefully I'll, I can uh, keep talking long enough for you guys to watch some, some more, as much video as possible. I apologize, but I'll make it up to you next time on after our USC's next practice on our next episode of Locked on USC following some practice. Anyways, back to, uh, <clears throat> back to practice report seven. Uh, again, I was focused on the wide receivers. Uh, mostly because they were right in front of me when the cameras were allowed to be turned on. Deuce Robinson, uh, he actually, he spoke with the media after practice. And <laughs> one of the first things he said, it, these guys are programmed to say certain things. It, it Just take it for what it's worth, okay? He talked about Miller Moss and how he's just shown great standout leadership. Um, and he also discussed how, you know, the challenges uh, to being a two-sport star. You know, he said there's been some long days. <laughs> uh, but the most challenging part, and because, you know, school is very important to him, is 
you know, keeping their keeping those grades where they need to be in the classroom. He said that's been the the hardest part. But you know, Coach Enfield, Coach Enfield, that's in the next segment. Coach Lincoln Riley and Coach Stankowitz, the baseball coach, and Deuce, they're all working together. This is kind of new. This is a new thing for each of them uh, at USC. Uh, coach Lincoln Riley dealt with this at Oklahoma with Kyler Murray. So they're just trying to make sure everything is working as smoothly as possible. Staying with the wide receivers. Um, if you haven't no noticed by now, I'm a huge Jacoby Lane fan. He has that it factor, you know, whatever it is, he has it. His leadership qualities um, are just front and center every single day. Uh, his teammates just gravitate towards him. The camera loves to find him. Uh, beyond his ability to lead, uh, he's, you know, he's he's a really dangerous player on the field as well. During the uh, two-on-one ball strip drill, uh, his his arm length, his catch radius, you know, being able to go up here, out here, whatever, um, that allows him to catch the ball away from his body. And when you're able to do that, that make that makes the defender's job equally hard. So Jacoby Lane, in my opinion, is going to uh, look. I, I said, who's going to have the most yardage and catches amongst the wide receiver group? I, I've got my vote in, in in the Jacoby Lane basket. I understand why everybody would say, no, 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 it's going to be Zachariah Branch. No, 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 Deuce Robinson. Don't count out Jacoby. Is all I'm saying. Um, oh, look, again, I don't know who the number one wide receiver is going to be in 2024, but Kyron Hudson, he's always at the front of the position group line for drills. He's one of the older guys that might have something to do with it, but he wants to make sure everybody knows how to do things and do things the right way, which is really important. That's what veteran leadership is all about. Again, you don't have to be vocal. Sometimes it's just going. Uh, the running backs, uh, the tight ends, they perform the same drill as the wide receivers with the defensive backs. If you uh, if you handle the ball on offense, you better learn how to protect the ball. And that's why you run this, I guess, call it a two-on-one type of gauntlet drill. Um, on the note with the running backs, new coach Anthony Jones Jr., he talked about uh, his move after practice coming over from TCU. I asked him... Um, you know, what, what are the characteristics you're looking for when you're recruiting a running back? Remember, we just got his, his first offer was to Riley Wormley, got a commitment. He says, just a fast, smart, strong, tough kid. That's what he wants. Those are the characteristics that he's looking for. And if he's fast, we like him. If he's really fast, we love him. Those were his, those were his words, his quote. Uh, and he said, you know, you can put those traits in any order you want. He, he wasn't, he wasn't saying one above the other. And look, coming to USC, tailback you. Um, he mentioned all the great running backs that he's developed since you know since he's been a running back coach. I put him on the spot and I asked him. I said, you know, here you are, USC. Who's your favorite USC running back? He joked. Uh, he said it's about. He, he joked about his wife having a really huge crush on Reggie Bush, and that helped him decide to uh, to take the job. Here's an interesting note. Uh, when he was talking to the media, he said he got the call from Lincoln Riley um, when he was having a team meeting with the, with the running backs at TCU. And I guess he had that O face, you know, the, maybe that one that Helton is, is known for, that meme, because his guys in the room were like, is everything okay, coach? Uh, he also mentioned that he had an NFL offer this offseason, but he prefers coaching at the college level. He likes teaching. My first impression, Coach Joan is a player's coach. And he's a really fun interview also, by the way. Loves to joke around, loves to add some humor to all of his answers. He said his biggest adjustment is getting used to the rain in L.A. That's all you need to know right there. He also, he also joked about uh, a few things, including the L.A.'s traffic, California taxes. Um, he said the only other time he'd actually been to California was for that national championship game a couple of years ago. And then he said, that didn't turn out so well. So on that note, um, he talked about Garrett Riley, Lincoln's brother, and he thought that their two offensive uh, teams would be similar. 
They are, but they're not. And it's all really about the terminology. He says, it screws with my brain. I thought y'all were brothers. Um, and basically, Garrett Riley, when it says go left, in Riley's system, it means go right. So those things are just, he's got to kind of get everything straight in his head. And one last note on spring practice number seven, Coach Matt Entz, working with the linebackers. I love when they're working their 4-3 alignment. Uh, in this drill, the middle linebacker was working on their obnoxious communication. They had to read the ball carrier in the backfield and make sure the uh, two linebackers uh, on either side knew which way to react. So check it out, um, what you saw on the film there. I'm going to switch over here. We're going we're gonna to turn the page on, into our next segment here. I think Jen Cohn might have found her guy. I'll let you know here in just a second. I'll have another uh, spring practice report coming up in a couple of days. But first. Let me, uh, yeah, let's just get into this. You can watch that while I'm talking. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers, you get, uh, you're going to get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tourney, the Dodgers, the Lakers, the LA Kings, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. We are uh, we're almost back to uh, There we go. Right. So let's get in it. I, you know, I thought we had, we knew we weren't done with the basketball season just yet, at least until we find out who USC's men's coach is going to be. So before we get out of here, I'm going to squeeze this in. Is Eric Musselman the guy? Um, look, despite Arkansas's athletic director putting out a video that his uh, that's stating that Eric Musselman, Eric Musselman was saying he wasn't leaving. Uh, day later, <laughs> he's interviewing in Los Angeles for USC's vacant job. Here's the thing. I have to imagine if he's offered it, he's going to take it. Number one, he's from California. He's a West Coast guy. Uh, he knows the Big Ten landscape. Uh, here's another big reason why it, it's a very viable um, thing that it could happen. His buyout, it's a million bucks. In today's world, that is literally opening up your wallet. And from just to put that into context, and I, I said why San Diego State's head coach, Brian Dutcher, isn't a candidate. His buyout is $10 million. Yeah, $10.5 million to be exact. So I think right now, the reason why Musselman is probably going to get the job, he might have, been, he might have burned that uh, bridge back to Fayetteville, Arkansas down. When you, when you go somewhere else to interview while you're employed, that's typically not a good sign. More than likely, he's... He's the guy because, again, you don't go through this process if it's not about crossing the T's and dotting the I's. It really isn't. Look, I'm not saying it's going to happen, and I'm not opposed to the possibility. Uh, I told you my first choice, and I probably shouldn't have an opinion as first or second, but I just think Bryce Drew from Grand Canyon University is a better option. We'll find out. So there's where we're going on with the uh, the head coaching search. By the way, a couple other notes on the men's basketball side of things. Bronny James, he's in the transfer portal. I'm not upset. Look, he could go to SMU where his girlfriend is enrolled. Uh, he actually tweeted an AI version of himself in a Duke uniform. So we'll see. I don't think he's coming back to USC. And again, I'm okay with that. Less LeBron, the better. Um, I think the bigger loss for USC in uh, the upcoming season, they got a, they lost a commitment from Trent Perry. That loss from Harvard Westlake four star point guard. <clears throat> he he decommitted from USC, and that was per ESPN's Jonathan uh, Giveny G I V O N Y O N Y. Perry's decision uh, it comes after. 
USC's head coach Andy Enfield took the SMU job. Six foot four, 175 pounds. He committed to USC back in October last year. And he did that over offers from Stanford and Oregon and Colorado, plus a whole bunch of other programs. So he signed his he signed his letter of intent in November. Now he's asking for his release so he can reopen his recruitment. Who knows? Maybe he comes back to USC. It typically doesn't happen like that. Not a good sign. So whomever takes the job, they're going to uh, they're going to have a lot of holes on that roster to fill. A lot. I mean, this roster has more holes than an Alex Grinch defense. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated. That's why you come to Locked on USC five times a week, because I'm going to give you all your news and notes, everything about USC that you can get in 30 minutes or less. And then when you're done making Locked on USC your first listen every day, you're heading on over to wrc.com. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.